the riches of the asteroid psyche, a treasure, however, impossible to bring home. Let's start with a question. Do you have any idea how many and which asteroids have been visited by our interplanetary probe so far? Three? Ten? A hundred? Can't quite remember? Well, no worries, we've got you covered. There have been a total of 17, excluding trans-Neptunian objects visited by the New Horizons probe. Before we dive into the main topic of this fantastic video, which is the currently ongoing mission to the treasure trove that is Asteroid 16 Psyche, we want to show them all to you, one by one. Are you ready? Alright, the first asteroid to be approached and photographed up close was 951 Gaspra, 12 kilometers in length, which the Galileo probe flew by in 1991 at a distance of 1600 kilometers. The second was 243 Ida, 28 kilometers in length, which Galileo also approached in 1993 to within 2400 kilometers. The third was 253 Mathilde, 66 kilometers, which the near Shoemaker probe flew by at a distance of 1200 kilometers in 1997. Then came the famous 433 Eros, 34 kilometers in length, which the near Shoemaker probe orbited from 2000 to 2001 and landed on in 2001. The fifth was 9969 Braille, 2 kilometers, which the Deep Space One probe flew by at a height of 26 kilometers in 1999. The sixth was 5535 Anne Frank, 4 kilometers, approached by the Stardust probe to a distance of 3078 kilometers in 2002. The seventh was 25143 Itokawa, 0.6 kilometers in length, which the Hayabusa probe orbited from 2005 to 2007 and collected samples from in 2005. The eighth was 2867 Steins, 5 kilometers, which the Rosetta probe photographed from a distance of 800 kilometers in 2008. The ninth was 21 Lutetia, 120 kilometers, which the Rosetta probe flew by at just over 3,000 kilometers away in 2010. The tenth was 4 Vesta, 525 kilometers in diameter, which the Dawn probe orbited from 2011 to 2012. The 11th was 4179 Teutonus, 4.5 kilometers in length, which the Chang'e uh, 2 probe flew by at a distance of 3.2 kilometers in 2012. The 12th was 1 Ceres, 945 kilometers in diameter, which the Dawn probe orbited from 2015 to 2018. The 13th was 162173 Raigu, 0.9 kilometers which the Hayabusa 2 probe orbited from 2018 to 2019 and collected samples from in 2018 and 2019. The 14th was 101955 Bennu, 0.5 kilometers, which the OSIRIS-REx probe orbited in 2018 and collected samples from in 2020. The 15th was 65803 Didymos, 0.8 kilometers, a binary asteroid that the DART probe reached in 2022. The 16th was Dimorphos, 0.2 kilometers, Didymos's companion, which the DART probe impacted in 2022. The 17th and last so far was 152830 Dinkinesh, 0.8 kilometers, which the Lucy probe approached to a distance of 425 meters in 2023. Fascinating, isn't it? But at this point, you might be wondering why we've gone through this impressive lineup of small worlds. Well, we did it to shine a spotlight on a mission that is still ongoing, and that in a few years could unveil the mystery surrounding one of the most talked about asteroids in recent years, 16 Psyche. You see, not all asteroids are piles of rocky debris like Bennu and Raigu, the two objects recently visited by the OSIRIS-REx and Hayabusa 2 missions. Some are made of much heavier and denser material like iron and nickel, the raw materials that concentrate becoming unreachable at the center of forming planets. We have known about the existence of 16 Psyche for quite some time, specifically since the night of March 17, 1852, when Italian astronomer Annabalda Gasparis from the Naples Observatory, using a small telescope, observed a slow movement of a faintly luminous object. Calculations in the following days revealed it to be an asteroid, the 16th in the series, orbiting on a fairly elliptical path at an average distance of 2.9 astronomical units from the Sun, 
equal to 437 million kilometers. Like all other asteroids, Psyche remained a mere point of light for several decades, until increasingly advanced astronomical instrumentation managed to determine its dimensions, mass, and other consequential parameters. As far as we know today, Psyche is an irregularly shaped object with an average diameter of about 220 kilometers, an asteroid in all normal at first glance. But then why did NASA launch a mission last October, sending a probe to reach it and orbit around it? What's so interesting up there to warrant the dispatch of a mission costing over half a billion dollars? Simple. Data on dimensions and mass from a couple of decades ago led scientists to believe what we are measuring today of Psyche is merely the metallic core of a much larger celestial body. It is thought that billions of years ago, Psyche was a protoplanet of dimensions similar to those of Mars. Then, involved in a series of violent impacts with other large planetary bodies in what we know now as the asteroid belt, its rocky mantle was stripped away, leaving the metallic core exposed. Further collisions heavily impacted the metallic layer and large fragments were launched into space. All rocky planets in fact possess a metallic core, the result of their tumultuous formation period, when heavier elements such as metals were destined to sink towards the center of the planet. Psyche, in short, seemed to have all the credentials to be the heart of a now-vanished planet, or more likely, one never formed. Immediately, the news was picked up by the media, which began publishing articles not about astronomy, but about money. Such a mass of metal, they said, must be worth at least ten quadrillion dollars. There was even talk of a large percentage of gold mixed with other metals, and it was during that period that NASA considered sending a probe to closely examine the real nature of that strange asteroid. But is there any truth to this story of the immense treasure that Psyche supposedly conceals? Well, maybe although certainly not in the terms proposed by the media. We know, for example, that to keep pace with the production of new electronic devices, smartphones, electric cars, batteries, etc., 170,000 tons of rare earth elements are extracted from our planet every year, causing serious damage to the environment and people. We also know that the fact that China has almost complete monopoly over the production of these resources is causing significant geopolitical tensions. So, began to think more than a few, if Psyche really were the metallic core of a shattered planet, then who knows, it might be possible to easily seize through open-bit mines, precious metals like gold, platinum, neodymium, cobalt, and other rare earths worth trillions of dollars. However, new studies have partly downsized the amount of metal present on Psyche, bringing its average density to a value of 4 grams per cubic centimeter higher than other metallic asteroids but perhaps low enough to cast doubt on the exposed core theory. In short, there is still a lot of confusion out there. Hypotheses overlap and astronomers have widely varying opinions. To provide an answer to this and other questions, but also, let's not deny it, to begin exploring the possibility of exploiting asteroids from a mining perspective, on October 13, 2023 from Launchpad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, the Psyche mission was launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. The probe that will analyze Psyche is about the size of an SUV, but with its extended solar panels, it reaches the size of a tennis court. These solar panels will be tasked with providing power to all onboard systems, including propulsion, navigation, scientific instruments, and communication. The mission uses a Hall Effect thruster, where electricity generated by the solar panels is fed to an electric rocket engine rather than chemically fueled. Psyche is effectively the first mission to employ Hall Effect thrusters beyond lunar orbit, and this ensures significant energy savings, but also a snail's pace towards the destination, so much so that it will take six years to arrive. Leveraging solar electric propulsion and a flyby with Mars in the spring of 2026, the probe will reach the asteroid in the summer of 2029, after a journey of approximately 3.6 billion kilometers. Once there, the probe will spend 26 months studying the geology, topography, and gravity of the asteroid. It will search for evidence of a magnetic field, and it will compare the asteroid's composition with what scientists know or think they know about Earth's core. To carry out its work, it will not be necessary for the spacecraft to land on the surface, but it will continue to orbit around the asteroid repeatedly and methodically, starting from 700 kilometers away and then descending to 75 kilometers from the surface and perhaps even lower. 
The central questions that the mission will have to answer are these. Is Psyche truly an exposed planetary core? Is the asteroid a large rocky mass, a pile of rubble of smaller rocks, or something completely different? Are there indications that the previous outer layers of this small world, the crust and mantle, were violently stripped away long ago? What we learn about Psyche may be extrapolated to solve some of the mysteries about the origin of Earth's core. And lastly, the question that transcends scientific objectives and focuses more on the economic aspect. If we could indeed prove that Psyche is nothing but a massive aggregate of metals, what could be our next move? Well, certainly not sending mining robots capable of then shipping the unearthed minerals back to Earth. It would be enormously costly and absurdly unintelligent to construct hundreds of rockets to bring millions of tons of iron, nickel, or rare earths back to Earth. We wouldn't gain any advantage from it. The value of a metal depends on its availability and market demand. So if vast quantities of precious metals were introduced to the market, their price would plummet. Moreover, the value of a metal is not absolute but relative to the economic and social context in which it is used. The theoretical value of $10 quadrillion that some media outlets have attributed to the Psyche asteroid is therefore just that, theoretical, and has no practical sense because it is not feasible to exploit the resources of this asteroid, both due to technical and logistical difficulties and ethical and legal implications. Nor would it be very practical to somehow move Psyche from its orbit to bring it near our planet. Psyche, as we've already mentioned, is a large asteroid, not a small rock, for which applying a measured thrust would suffice to bring it close to us. There's only one solution, in our opinion, to exploit resources on site, which means going to Psyche, extracting the minerals and then producing them in factories and industries built specifically next to the mines. But why should we go into space to look for rare metals on inconvenient and tiny celestial bodies like asteroids when we have a whole planet to dig into? The reason apart from the progressive scarcity of materials lies in the fact that when our planet was still in molten state, gravity caused all the heaviest elements to sink into the core. This depleted the Earth's crust of all metals until a veritable bombardment of asteroids occurring from 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago brought back to the surface all these minerals that we are still extracting today, essential for our economic and technological progress, but increasingly difficult to locate. On asteroids, apart from those of planetary size, gravity had no influence. Indeed, these many impacts they endured, which fragmented them, surely ensured that the heavy minerals we seek are somewhere near the surface, and thus easily to identify and extract. It is believed that between large and small, ranging from 10 meters to almost 1,000 kilometers in diameter, our solar system may count tens of millions of asteroidal objects. Of course, at least for the initial period, it will be advantageous for us to choose the best targets among those orbiting as close to Earth as possible, namely among the over 15,000 objects called NEOs, near-Earth objects, observed and cataloged precisely because of their characteristic of dangerously approaching Earth. In practice, NEOs represent both a threat and a resource, and the technologies necessary to bring asteroid resources into Earth's orbit will certainly also allow us to develop methods to deflect objects at high risk of impact. But how many asteroids are potential mining hotspots? Marvin Elvis, an astrophysicist at Harvard University, has developed an equation to estimate the number of asteroids that could be potential candidates for extraction with our current technology. The equation takes into account the number of asteroids within reach of our current technology, their composition, and the economic margins for profit. Elvis estimated that at least 10 potentially metal-rich asteroids, including Psyche itself, and 18 sufficiently water-rich ones are within our reach. Easy enough, then. Not quite. Currently, asteroid mining is to be considered a wholly speculative project, whose immediate implementation is burdened by huge startup costs. Despite this, more and more private companies are emerging with the explicit purpose of prospecting, exploring, and extracting asteroids. And it's clear that this splendid idea is now shifting from the realm of science fiction to the world of scientific fact. However, this doesn't happen overnight. It requires huge economic investments and human resources as well as a lot of foresight. NASA, for its part, has already demonstrated a concrete interest in this sector and has been presenting the new asteroid initiative for some years now 
to select an asteroid suitable for capture, dragged into an orbit intermediate between Earth and the Moon, and then explored by astronauts in the flesh. But when this happens, it will certainly involve an NEO asteroid only a few tens of meters in diameter, not a colossal and distant object like Psyche. For that, we'll have to wait for the results of a mission that will only finalize its objectives in 2029. Hang in there, guys. Once again, patience is key.